I've been noticing something lately, that Protestants often accuse Catholics of not following the Bible, but of ignoring scripture and going with their own personal interpretation and personal traditions. But I feel like Protestants live a double standard because they do the exact same thing. They quote certain passages, but they ignore other ones, whereas Catholics quote many verses and Protestants just ignore them. So for the fact that they say, oh, well, we go by the Bible. Well, how come Protestants can't agree with each other? Lutherans, Calvinists, Baptists, Pentecostals all disagree with each other and so on down the line. Anglicans, Episcopalians, they all disagree with each other on the Bible. So whose interpretation is correct, first of all? How do we know which denomination to follow, first of all? Well, don't go by any denomination. Just go by the Bible. Can you see the problem? Can anybody out there see the problem with that question? Just go by the Bible. All of these denominations are just going by the Bible, and they're coming up with different interpretations, teachings, theology, and doctrine. So again, whose denomination should we follow? Whose interpretation of the Bible should we follow? We're always accused of well, you listen to your priests. Priests interpret the Bible for you. We just go, you know, by the Bible ourselves. So we go by our priests and you go by yourself. At least priests have been trained between eight to 12 years in theology and biblical studies. <laughs> How much training do you have in biblical studies? I would listen to a priest any day over a normal lay person, Protestant who doesn't really know the Bible or understand scripture. But besides that, it's not the priest's who give the official teaching of the Bible. It's the church, not just priests. It's the church that Jesus established, gave his authority to, breathed his authority into. He is the one who gave the church the authority to establish this and to interpret scripture, as opposed to each and every individual Protestant. Well, I just go by the Bible. Well, you're going by your own individual interpretation of the Bible. How is that any different than listening to a priest? Oh, well, you go by your priests and what they say. Well, you go by yourself and what you say. What's the difference? Your priests are a man. Well, you're a man also, but, you know, or a woman, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But they might say, yes, but we go by the Holy Spirit. Oh, really? Priests don't pray to the Holy Spirit. Priests don't ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. The church never asks the Holy Spirit for guidance. Can you see the double standard hypocrisy here? And the very shoddy assumptions being made here that nobody in the Catholic Church prays to the Holy Spirit for guidance. That doesn't even make sense. It's all over Catholic teaching doctrines, counsels, that we must pray and seek the Holy Spirit for a proper interpretation of Scripture. Now, that doesn't mean we can't read the Bible, uh, learn from it, that God can't speak to us, that there's some freedom for interpretation, because all of that is true. But the final interpretation resides with the church. Now, you might notice that Protestants might say something like, oh, yeah, but we go by the Bible, because look, the Bible says in Acts 16, for example, to believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. So you guys don't believe that. You add works. But can you notice they're taking one verse out of context and ignoring the rest of the New Testament? And they're, they also ignore verses that don't apply to them. So they might say, oh, look, you don't follow X, Y, and Z. But we could turn it around and say the exact same thing. We quote 1 Peter 3.21, which says baptism saves you. And they say, oh, immediately they say, oh, no, baptism doesn't save you. We say John 6.54, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood to have eternal life. Oh, no, that's not what he meant. That's just a symbol. Or we might say, oh, well, if you look in the book of Corinthians, it says all your women must wear headdresses or veils or some sort of head covering. All Protestant churches, do your women in church wear head coverings? The Bible says they must. So do you go by the Bible or not? And they might try to find some way to explain that away. Notice they never try when it comes to Catholic teaching to say, oh, well, what Catholics teach, I might misunderstand, or I might misunderstand their interpretation, or what I think might not be in context, or it might be symbolic, or it might be a literal, or it might be metaphorical, or it might be a different interpretation than what I think. They never think that when it comes to Catholicism. It's just, you're wrong because you disagree with me. But when it comes to their own interpretations and biblical passages that don't fit their theology, their lifestyle, or they just don't want to follow, oh, well, that's not what it means. Well, it's just symbolic. And they try to explain it away, but they don't give Catholics that same ability to do that. It's just, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. And that's not really the way we're supposed to interpret scripture. That most of the passages that we quote are more of a literal translation where Protestants have to spiritualize it or uh, try to explain it away. Like Jesus in Matthew 26, 26, where he says, uh, this is my body. No, that's not his body. It's just a symbol. Well, where does it say it's a symbol? He says it's his body. So if it's not his body, where does it say it's not? 
Or where does it say it's just a symbol? Oh, well, it doesn't. It, he said, do that in memory of me. Well, that doesn't mean it's a symbol. And in fact, if you understand that, especially from a Jewish tradition, that does not mean symbolic at all. So where does Jesus say it's not his body? We're the ones taking it literally here. We're taking scripture at face value many times and we're Protestants do not. So I find that there's a lot of a double standard going on here that they just want to attack certain things without thinking about these things themselves. There's so many shelf verses that Protestants don't want to deal with. So they take it and put it on a shelf and they don't think about it. Or, or they expect you to follow every passage of the Bible, but then they don't really do that. Like Acts chapter four, where it says that the apostles took money from everybody. Everybody had to sell what they own, like their houses and stuff, and give the money to the apostles who distributed it evenly among the church community. And everybody, it said, was living good. There were like no poor people among them. And if there were, they would give money to them. And everybody was supported. Now, if we're going to follow the Bible literally, like Protestants seem to in imply, now, of course, not all Protestants. I mean, anybody who knows better, like scholars and theologians, they wouldn't do this. But for your average run-of-the-mill Protestant in everyday life, and especially on social media, they expect everything. To, this is what it says. This is how it is. Even many Protestant influencers are this way. But if you're going to hold to that kind of biblical interpretation, well, then you better go sell everything you own and give it to your pastor. And your pastor better start collecting money from everybody. When you sell your car, you can't put it in your bank account. You have to give it to your pastor for those in need. That's what the Bible says. There are so many verses on these things that Protestants just don't accept or they don't think about or they just ignore or that doesn't apply to us today. They're willing to explain it away, but they're not willing to do that for Catholics. They're so sure Catholics are wrong, or they they haven't misunderstood them, or they know Catholic theology 100%, even though they've never read a Catholic book, a Catholic encyclopedia, a Catholic letter, a Catholic anything. They've never read anything about Catholicism, and yet they're sure that they know exactly what Catholics believe and why they're wrong. It's not really honest, people. And I want to ask people on both sides to really step up. If you haven't read books and studied both sides, then you need to do that. We have many shelves here where the bottom shelves are all Protestant books, anti-Catholic books, books that are against Catholicism. And we've read many of them because we're not afraid of the truth. Whereas many former Catholics and Protestants just get online. They watch YouTube videos that hate the Catholic Church, that are against the Catholic Church. They don't care if the information is true. And then just take that information, assuming it's true, because this is how shoddy our intellectual research is today, and they just regurgitate it to attack Catholics. But they still haven't read a single Catholic book. They still don't understand Catholicism. They still don't understand the Bible. They're just taking these things, programming them, and getting rid of them. <laughs> Firing them, I should say, attacking Catholics with them. But the reality is, if you claim to follow a God of truth, then you need to be truthful yourselves. And you need to make sure that you're teaching truth. To the best of your ability, you need to make sure that you're teaching truth, not just studying one side, not just getting ammunition against a religion you think is wrong and you don't like. You need to do real research. And many Protestants do. And they end up coming to Catholicism, or at least, even if they don't become Catholic, they can say, oh, wow, wow, I had many misconceptions about Catholicism. I didn't know that before. Okay, that makes much more sense. And while I'm not willing to accept it yet or at all, I can at least see that it's not what I thought it was. I can accept that. That's intellectually honest. I appreciate that. Even Mormons, many people misrepresent Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, they say, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses are so stupid. They think only 144,000 people are going to heaven. And I say, well, it mentions 144,000 people going to heaven in Revelation 7 and in Revelation 14. So what do you have to say about that? And people say, wait, it does? And they said, well, how would you debunk that? I said, well, why are you attacking them when you haven't done sufficient research first? Sometimes we feel so proud of ourselves that we just like to attack other people hate on other people. I mean, even on this channel, we get accused of that. But really, in reality, we've done the research on both sides extensively for over two decades. And many of the arguments and the videos we make here are not to attack or hate on Protestants. They're actually made to defend the Catholic faith from these Protestant attacks that we get daily, countless times per day, because so many people misunderstand the Catholic faith. We want to give a clear presentation of what we truly believe and show some of the problems with Protestantism as well, because we care for people and we want to bring them back to the church. It's not an attack. It's not we're right, you're wrong. It's 
not we're good, you're bad. No, it's that's stupid. That's juvenile theology. That's juvenile apologetics. No, it's about truth. It's about loving Christ. The fact that Christ started a church and he wants everyone to be part of it. He wants everybody to come home to be part of that one unity again. John 17 says they will know that there is one God. They will know the truth by your unity. So what happens? What's the What's the converse of that? That when we are broken apart and scattered through division and denominations and everything that Christ didn't want. Now atheists laugh at us and say, you guys can't even agree among each other. Why would we take your religion seriously? You don't even know what the truth is. Yes, we do. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. And they say, well, which one of you is right? Lutherans or Calvinists, Presbyterians or Baptists, Anglicans, you know, down the line, which one's right? You can't even agree. So when you guys figure it out, then you come talk to me. But back in the day, there was one unity. There was one love. There was one church, one faith, one hope, one baptism, one doctrine. And that's the way that Jesus wants it. So let's step it up on both sides. Both sides can step up and do more intellectual research and honest research. Seriously, even if you just read, you know, some Catholic articles to see, hey, I don't understand what Catholics teach about baptism. Why do they teach them baptism means to be born again? Well, go read an article on it on our website, catholictruth.org, or check out our video on that topic. Or what do Catholics believe about Mary? Why do they pray to her? Why do they worship her? That sort of thing. Well, go watch a video. Honestly, not just to attack it, not to critique it, but to honestly figure out what Catholics believe. You might not agree with everything, but if you're open to it, you might say, okay, I, I, I didn't know that. This, I kind of still have problems with, but these things, that makes a little bit more sense. That's intellectual honesty. Not just like, oh, they're wrong. Everything's wrong. You worship Mary, you bow to statues and all these fallacious arguments. So <laughs> thanks for listening to my rant today. Thanks for listening to my uh, video here today. Please share it with others so that others can hear the truth that will set them free. And if you would like, please consider supporting our ministry, $10 a month, $25 a month, $50 a month, or one-time donations. Uh, all needed to make these videos, all needed to make this ministry, to do apologetics, evangelization, retreats, and so much more. Please become a patron. Please support our ministry. If we've blessed you in any way, please give back and bless us so we can turn and bless others again. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, comment. If you ever have questions, there's a question link in the description section below. And feel free to follow us on social media for all of your daily inspiration. Hi everyone, my name is Kate. I'm the video editor here at Catholic Truth. And I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for taking some time to watch our videos and learn more about your faith. You guys really make this channel possible and we truly appreciate you being here. So thanks again and God bless.